Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today we have epidermoid carcinoma, which is also known as squamous cell carcinoma or SCC. So which is the most common malignant neoplasm of the oral cavity. And uh, it is a neoplasm which exhibits squamous differentiation as characterized by the formation of keratin and the presence of intercellular bridges. So keratin formation and intercellular bridges. And most specifically squamous differentiation. So let's learn the most common malignant neoplasm of the oral cavity. So as I mentioned, squamous cell carcinoma, it is a malignant neoplasm exhibiting squamous differentiation and characterized by formation of the keratin and or the presence of intercellular bridges. So the male to female ratio is 2 is to 1, most commonly seen in males and mainly found in the elder age group after the fourth decade so after the fourth decade is most commonly seen in male group and the mortality rate is lowest for lip cancer and highest for the tongue so lip is the lowest and highest is for tongue cancer so it could be anywhere on the tongue uh, like lips, uh, tongue, buccal mucosa, floor of the mouth, palate and most common site is tongue and the least one is lip. So etiology is as we all know tobacco is in its various form like smokeless tobacco uh, which is the main cause especially when coupled with excess alcohol and also high exposure to ultraviolet radiation uh, is a predisposing factor also leukoplakia, poor oral hygiene, mm, diet with low levels of vitamin A and vitamin C, A and C, and uh, inadequate consumption of fruits and vegetables, which is also a contributing factor. Patients who are immunosuppressed, they are also in predisposed group, and rare conditions like xeroderma pigmentosa, and also risk factor for oral cancer has been shown to increase in the presence of human papilloma infection. So these are the etiological factors of squamous cell carcinoma. Whereas moving on to clinical features, the all cancers have two very characteristic features in the form of one is ulceration and the second one is an inturated margin. So these are the typical two striking features of squamous cell carcinoma. Now in histologic uh, types we have uh, three uh, major types in histologic classification. Uh, histologic types are uh, well differentiated, well differentiated, well differentiated uh, is slightly uh, towards a malignant region or the prognosis also is better in well differentiated group it consists of sheets and nests of cells with obvious origin from the squamous epithelium and cells are usually large and show a distinct cell membrane although intercellular bridges often mm, cannot be demonstrated nuclei are large and may demonstrate a good uh, deal of uh, variability in staining mitotic figures may be found uh, many of which are atypical and the most prominent features are individual cell individual cell keratinization okay individual cell keratinization and the formation of 
keratin pearls so these are the two striking features of well differentiated group whereas the moderately differentiated that is the second one moderately differentiated moderately differentiated uh, where the tumor resemblance to the squamous epithelium is less pronounced this is more of squamous epithelium it is less uh, pronounced towards the uh, squamous epithelium and the characteristic shape of the lesion that is the shape of the cells uh, not lesion cells may be altered and the growth rate is more rapid compared to the well differentiated and greater numbers of mitotic figures and they fail to form keratin the third type is poorly differentiated poorly differentiated is very little resemblance to the uh, cell of origin and will present diagnostic difficulties the prognosis of poorly differentiated is very difficult or very minimal I mean the recovery is very difficult with respect to a poorly differentiated group and this is like a stage 3 or 4 cancer this is the beginning stages stage 1 and stage 2 and metastasis involve chiefly submaxillary and superficial uh, deep cervical lymph nodes so submaxillary and deep cervical lymph nodes deep cervical lymph nodes so towards these nodal groups it will be uh, metastasis and the basic three types are well differentiated moderately differentiated and poorly differentiated so as i mentioned uh, squamous cell carcinoma are of various type the first one is carcinoma of lip carcinoma of lip which occurs in elderly male especially in the lower lip and it is most common cause uh, is as we all know it is tobacco or through pipe smoking clinical features are begins with uh, or begins on the vermilion border of the lip on one side of the midline and often starts as a small area of thickening or induration and ulceration it enlarges then create a small crater like defect or produce an exophytic proliferative so sometimes it will be exophytic or sometimes a crater like depression so it is generally slow to uh, metastasis and this if it is occur then it is going to ipsilateral uh, nodes and involves a submental or submaxillary nodes so contralateral metastasis may occur only if the lesion is near the midline otherwise it is going only to the one side okay if it is going either side it should be on the towards the midline and treatment we do either surgical ex excision or x-ray ex, uh, treatment and usually it has a good prognosis whereas the tongue which has the least prognosis so it is uh, suggested that the syphilis and tongue carcinoma there is a relationship but nothing has proved yet so clinical features are a painless mass or ulcer which might become painful if it is secondarily infected it begins as a superficially indurated ulcer with slightly raised border and may develop into fungating exophytic mass fungating exophytic mass that is in tongue okay so there will be an infiltration to the deeper layer of tongue producing fixation and enduration develops on the lateral borders or the ventral surface of the tongue so lesion on the posterior portion are usually of a higher grade of malignancy and easily uh, go on metastasis and offer a poor prognosis if it is on the posterior part of tongue because of uh, its inaccessibility for a treatment so anterior part we can uh, go for a surgical excision or, or the posterior part the accessibility 
and uh, it is a poor prognosis when it is on the posterior part posterior part poor prognosis and treatment and uh, as i mentioned treatment is very difficult as uh, the efficacy of it depends on the efficacy of surgery and prognosis also very poor so the squamous cell carcinoma the least prognosis is seen in tongue so whereas a carcinoma of floor of the mouth okay floor of the mouth uh, when smoking especially pipe or cigar it is the most important in etiology it is an indurated ulcer of varying size situated on one side of the midline more frequently on the anterior portion of the floor because its location early extension into lingual mucosa of the mandible and then it goes to the tongue even to the submaxillary or sublingual glands so sometimes it may produce a uh, limitation or the motion of the tongue or slurring of the speech slurring of the speech or tongue movements it may affect these two things tongue movements and slurring of the speech so contralateral metastasis is common as a primary lesion occurs mostly on the midline so surgical part it's also uh, like uh, we need to go for a radiation therapy it gives a uh, better results than the surgery whereas a carcinoma of buccal mucosa so it is uh, most commonly seen in men and etiology it is uh, in area against the person has habitually carried a quid of chewing tobacco so smokeless tobacco where they used to keep in buccal uh, vestibule and uh, it creates a change in the epithelium which leads to squamous cell carcinoma of buccal mucosa and uh, clinical features usually develops along the inferior uh, uh, to a line opposite the plane of occlusion so it is a plane of occlusion so it is seen the below the line of occlusion where the buccal vestibule and where the people usually keeps the tobacco pouches so lesion is uh, often a painful ulcerative one where the induration and infiltration of deeper tissue is common some lesions may even be exophytic and metastasis is very frequent so treatment we need to uh, do a combination of surgery and x-ray radiation the carcinoma of gingiva uh, the problem is its similarity to common dental infection has frequently led to the delay in diagnosis or even misdiagnosis with respect to gingiva because the periapical lesions periapical uh, abscess all those may uh, cause the delay in diagnosis so carcinoma of gingiva was another problem which commonly found in the mandibular gingiva which initially present as an area of ulceration which may be purely erosive or may exhibit exophytic growth purely erosive or exophytic and it arises more commonly in edentulous areas and fixed gingiva that is attached gingiva is commonly involved than the marginal gingiva erosion of the underlying bone is frequent and the metastasis is more common from the mandibular gingiva and treatment also similarly we need to combine the surgical and radiation and carcinoma of palate is uh, not a very common lesion which the clinical features include poorly defined ulcerated painful lesion on one side of the midline it frequently crosses the midline and may extend laterally to include the lingual gingiva or posteriorly to involve the tonsillar pillar or even the uvula so that is a metastasis also is common now we uh, wind up the squamous cell carcinoma so squamous cell carcinoma is the most common type which has uh, three different category that is well differentiated moderately differentiated and poorly differentiated depends on the histologic features and prognosis also uh, 
uh, inferior with respect to the poorly differentiated. So we have uh, squamous cell carcinoma of lip, tongue, floor of the mouth, gingiva, buccal mucosa and palate. It is a commonly asked essay question. So next I uh, will come up with a, uh, another carcinoma in uh, dentistry and more. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.